it's something I'd like to look into as well in the future, because this is something very eye-opening, I have to admit. Um, as far as the electromagnetic fields and the antennas uh, versus uh, cell phones, um, what is basically more harmful, uh, transmitting uh, electromagnetic fields? Is it the antennas or the cell phones? What's more harmful? Yeah. Um, well, that's a very good question as well. It depends on a lot of variables. It depends on how, you know, the proximity to the, to the tower or antenna. It depends on what level it's transmitting. Um, it depends on how you're using your cell phone. You know, there, there are safe ways to use it and there are ways to use phones that make them, you know, a big health hazard. So there's, there's many variables that could affect the answer to that. Okay, so I guess the word should go to people just to not expose themselves so much as maybe use uh, earpieces and speaker. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Rule number one, keep the phone off your body as much as possible. And if you're gonna use a headset, um, I mean, there's particular types of headsets that you can use to keep the radiation from going up the copper wire, you know, into your brain. Um, it's, you know, it's good to use speaker phone and, and keep the phone off your body, uh, things like that. Put the phone in airplane mode as much as possible. Uh, you know, we don't need to have our phones on all the time. Definitely don't sleep with your phone in your bed, as many people unfortunately do. Um, yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a series of videos on how to safety-proof your cell phone and household um, wireless radiation that's harming us and what you can do about it, things like that. It's Dr. Deborah Green. That's my uh, YouTube handle. Okay, thank you. Deborah, can I add to your answer? Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, do, please. I, okay, great. I, okay. The policy issue here is the infrastructure. Unlike a cell phone where you have a choice of whether to turn your antennas on or off, when you look at the infrastructure, which is outside your bedroom window, you have no chance to turn that off. That's forced exposure 24 seven. And I can just give you a quick metaphor that worked at in San Francisco, which invited me into then to the Department of Public Health. And the way to think about this is that the standard is set at only a rate of exposure. It was game from day one to only look at the rate of exposure. But no other poison is studied that way. Every other poison is studied by the total dose. So you have to think about the total dose of exposure you're getting. So it's kind of like this. If, uh, just imagine you have two beakers in front of you, one left and one right, and all I'm gonna tell you is the rate at which I'm gonna put poison into those beakers, but you have to drink one because we're installing this in front of your house, okay? So I'm gonna say to you, uh, I'm gonna put poison at two drops a second into each of these beakers, the one in your left and your right hand. Which one do you wanna drink? And then you don't know yet, so I give you the rest of the information. All right, the one on the left is two drops per second for 10 seconds, and the one on the right is two drops per second for 24 hours. So you have a smidge of poison on the one on the left and a full beaker of poison on the one on the right. Now, which one do you wanna drink? I think you're gonna pick the smidge on the left, right? Well, in your left hand represents driving past a cell phone tower or a small cell. And on the right is living next to a cell phone tower unless you live on the second story, because then you have to drink five beakers a day. That's what's really going on. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, comment. 